Hey everybody, this is me on Dead Viking. It brings me great pleasure to tell you about this game today. It's called Venom Assault. Venom Assault is a cooperative game uh, that pits the players as members of the freedom forces of the world uh, doing battle against the evil terrorist organization known as Venom. So... <laughs> If you grew up uh, like I did, uh, you might remember, uh, if you, like back in like you know the the 80s, uh, you might remember a certain uh, after-school cartoon that was on quite a bit that that pit a a group of uh, ordinary Joes, if you will, who had to defeat uh, an evil uh, organization that uh, was snake-based as well. Um, and obviously, this game is a a reference uh, to that kind of world and it's very tongue-in-cheek and there's, there's like a little bit of humor and a little bit of kitsch, if you will. But uh, there is a very, very strong, very, very fun cooperative game uh, with a deck building uh, 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 mechanism and a very, very fun combat mechanism as well uh, within this box. And it's a heck of a lot of fun to see if you can defeat the, the evil forces, if you will. So um, why don't I show you uh, how to play Venom Assault and we'll come back here and we'll talk a little bit further about why I like this one a great deal. All right, this is Venom Assault. Let me just kind of give a quick overview of the board so you can have an idea of what you're looking at. So obviously this is like a status board of the world, right? And then there are these seven locations. And I've already set up the game. So just uh, each one of these locations um, are like Ar the Arctic here in uh, the Venom Mountain Defense and Venom Air Dominator, Venom Sky Temple, uh, you know, the Venom Island and so forth. Uh, depending upon the scenario that you pick, and like I just grabbed the, the the basic one, the one that you start off with, that they say you should try first, the world in darkness. Um, there are certain setups that you will go through, and they'll tell you whether or not you're using uh, certain Venom leaders, or if you're going to be using certain Venom uh, rewards for certain missions and things like that. And then you set up... Uh, the board uh, by setting up these two decks. You have your Venom Rewards and your Venom Leaders. And uh, then you, you, you pick, and in this case there are 14 of each of those cards. And then each one of these locations gets both a Venom Leader and a Reward. And the Reward is face down, you don't know what's there. And the Venom Leader is face up. Now in this particular case you're kind of racing against time uh, to capture uh, these four definitive items that are, will prevent uh, the, the mission from working out for Venom. And so, uh, and if, like, you manage to, like, you know, capture the, 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 the Venom leader that's there and get the reward, you just then replace that, like so with these. And so you can run into situations where eventually you don't replace them, and in which case then that spot is, like, cleaned out, it's cleared, and you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, Venom uh, being in that spot anymore. So, uh, just also quickly, like, this is a game that you're going to be using uh, tons and tons of dice because you're going to be rolling uh, your actions, rolling your attacks to attempt to capture uh, these leaders. And this is, uh, at its heart, a, a, a deck-building game that has uh, a unique uh, combat mechanism added to it as well. And so each person is going to start uh, with ten cards. And the ten cards, and the beginning cards are either recruits, like you see here, or they are commandos. Now the big difference between recruits and commandos is that uh, recruits um, have this little stat in the middle here. That's their uh, their value if they are recruiting a, uh, a a new person into your your personal army, if you will. But you notice their gun ability here. They don't have an attack ability. It doesn't do any good. They they they, they can't. They can't be a mission leader, like your combat leader, if you will. Um, and so then, but commandos, as you can see, uh, they have a combat value of two, and they have only a one recruit. And so that's kind of like uh, the big difference there. Both of them have a secondary ability that during the tactical phase, if you use them for their secondary ability, they have a plus one. They'll give a bonus of plus one to the uh, attack value. And I'll explain how that works really quickly. So um, basically what happens is, is that at the beginning of the first person's turn, uh, like the like, and then that'll be like they'll turn over one of these event cards. And event cards come in uh, a couple different things. So uh, these, the creatures of venom, 
it, it'll, it'll become like, in this case, Venom deploys a special weapon called High Wave, a mind control device that takes over the minds of all animals in the animal kingdom, including Pit and Rivet. With their new four legged army, Venom can threaten any city in the world. Freedom Squadron has to stop this new device and save the animals of the world. So, so the global effect is the tactical phase Venom leaders will gain plus one, and that's like their support. And I'll explain how that works. And so that is one that helps Venom. And so you put the active event up there, and then when the next event card comes, across you would replace it with that one. Um, in some situations uh, some Venom leaders will actually have you turn over uh, global events and uh, depending upon whether they're good or bad they'll affect them. And so like here we have uh, Out to Sea and so this one you can see is blue and so this is good for you know the, the freedom forces if you will. So millionaire Jeff Von Marken holds a political gathering on his new yacht and the Freedom Squadron is on hand to ensure their safety. Uh, roulette is caught attempting to cheat Jeff out of all of his money. Uh, the global effect is so any combat uh, in the sea this round tr uh, treats the Venom's Venom leader's health That's a, by minus one. So that's a, kind of a, a good thing. And since I've set up the deck for this purpose, I'm going to... Oops, I actually I missed, <laughs> I missed set up. Uh, so then uh, you have here the Venom Strikes card. Venom's sinister plot advances. Move the event track up by one and see the mission for the effect. So these are bad. If these happen, um, this pushes this event track up like so. And if that ever reaches five, you've lost uh, the game because of the fact that like Venom's nefarious plot has come to fruition. And then each mission will have a, uh, a thing, what happens when it reaches one, two, three, four, five, and so forth, like that. And, you know, so it's like, uh, Venom has activated the red control cube. This reward card no longer provides its bonus to players. It's still worth victory points. And so, and the the red, um, yellow, blue, and green control cubes are the things that you're looking for. And if you notice that the vast one here, uh, Venom has deployed uh, the Shroud of Darkness. Players may take one round to play for every control cube they collectively have. Any cube rescued during these rounds may be added for the same effect. If there is no time left, Venom has succeeded. So it isn't an automatic loss in this case, but you're definitely running out of time in that situation. And of course, there's a little background. And I should mention, um, you know, before I get too far ahead and as far as showing you how to play, I should mention that there are tons of these cards. And the ones that are red, like here, are more difficult than normal. You know, so that you want to make sure, like, so if you want to, you know, take it easy on yourself, um, you know, you don't want to, like, you know, mess with it too much, you can play an easier one or whatever. And there are actually uh, things within the rules that um, go further into how. Uh, you can like both ramp up or the difficulty or take it, you know, make it make the game a little easier, if you will. So uh, on your turn, you're going to like, as with most deck builders, you have your deck, you take the top five cards and you know, you'll, you'll then uh, deploy those. And each person takes their turn uh, one at a time. So this isn't something, but you definitely can uh, look at your five cards. You'll have five cards in your hand. So then you, as the other players can discuss uh, your actions. You can say, well, I'm going to do this my turn. And then the other people can look at their hands also and say, well, I'm going to be really good at, you know, attacking uh, Venom Lylan this turn or what have you. And so then you can kind of plot this process out and figure out what you want to do. And so the first thing you're usually going to do is you're going to try to recruit. And so you're going to like, you're going to put your cards down. And usually what you're going to do is you're going to declare one is going to be your active like combat person. So you probably take one of your commandos and you'd say, okay, this is going to be my active combat person. And then some of your players, like if they, if they have during the recruitment phase, if they have a special ability down here in the recruitment phase, then you could use it for that purpose. Um, you know, so, you know, it's one of those things that have, and let me just find one that actually has that so you can see what I mean. So here we have Sparks, and notice that not everything has, uh, this, is, this is a prototype, so not everything is going to have a picture on it, so just bear with me here. Uh, but um, the recruitment phase, look at the bottom three cards of your draw deck, place one card on top of your draw deck, and discard the rest. So you'd have this ability, and the thing is, is that if you use that ability, then they can't be like your combat uh, person, though. So it's something that you can't, um, you know, you, don't, you might not want to use the recruitment ability, but there's that recruitment ability uh, that you have. And plus, there are there's both um, a, a combat phase abilities and also tactical phase abilities as well uh, that, that each person has for those different phases of the game. 
So going through with our recruit phase, uh, we'll just look at all five of the cards. Remember, we're not using any of the special abilities, so we don't have to worry about using up the cards for a later phase. So we just, you know, we have a one for the commando, a one for the commando, and then we have a two, and a two, and a two. So we have eight total points. And so then you can look at the, these cards out here and see what the costs are, and you can go ahead and pick one. Um, there are, it isn't necessarily always going to be um, you know, like uh, people, there are uh, what, like vehicles as well, like this Timberwolf, and you can see it's a vehicle uh, by that thing up there. Or you can see like, you know, the Patriot is, is also like a vehicle, because you can see there. But since we got eight, why don't we go ahead and recruit the Nightshade? Uh, you know, and she's, she costs eight over here. She's got a good recruit, and she's got a really good tactical phase ability. After Venom support abilities have taken effect, have the final total of all combat dice from the combat leader and all freedom support cards rounded down. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, you know, she's got a pretty good ability. And then combat phase, add plus three to the rolled value of all combat dice, which is also another fantastic ability as well. So, so you're going to take this, and we're going to go ahead and we'll put that in our discard pile. We don't get it right away. So we'll just, you know, uh, know that that will be eventually something that we'll be able to draw and then so because now we're going to go into the tactical phase and we since we've uh, if we're not going to if we decide we're not going to attack anybody then we immediately get done with our turn and we go through like the process of we get the option of, of retiring one of the cards in our hand um you know and usually that's going to be one of these recruits or something depending on that basically is a trashing of the card uh but uh if you've played other uh, uh games uh, or deck building games anyway so you you go ahead and you know, like you declare your first one, and then you know the best way to do this is to like say who you're gonna attack. So let's go. We're, we're gonna try to take out uh, the Vipress here. And so the first thing you do is you're gonna look at the Vipress, and you're just gonna set the stats. So you can see the Vipress has two health, and she has uh, four shield. Now remember, she's got um, the two. Uh, uh, support, but remember she gets an extra one because of the fact that technically we have you know this one out there still, uh, so she she gets a bonus one support. So you know, this might be a little tough, but who knows? We'll see, see what happens here. And so um, you know what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put uh, the d defense at four, and we're going to put her health at two like that. So we've got we've gone ahead and placed those stats over there, so we know what we're going in for. So we're going to go ahead and put the commando down, and then the commando has a two dice, so we're going to go ahead and put two dice on there like so. And then all the other ones are tactical phase plus one, so if we put those four down like this, we're going to go and take those four dice and just kind of go one, two, three, four. Now, the first thing you do is you're going to check and make sure that you have as many, at least more dice than uh, the the health of the of the thing that you're attacking if you don't have that many dice you can't win so uh you can't do anything like that now if you have any special abilities as far as during the tactical phase or whatever like like supplemental powers or whatever on other cards that you have you can go ahead and act those at this time and you can go ahead and affect those things um we're going to go ahead and look at Vipress, we're going to look at her ability, and it says during the tactical phase, you draw two event cards, ignore any Freedom Squadron events, and immediately resolve the Venom events as normal. All round long events uh, effects remain, as well as the current effects, until the next event phase. So, uh, what we're going to do is, you know, so we're, we already got rid of those two, so uh, let's go ahead and draw two event phases, see uh, if the Vipress gets any help here. So, uh, we have uh, Venom for Mayor as one card, and so plot from the past. So we got Lucky. Uh, she does, she's not going to get any bonuses or anything to it. But um, now we're going to go into our combat phase, and this is where we get to go ahead and draw our our Venom support cards. So we're going to go one, two, three, and we're going to see what we get here. So um, she tactical phase. Uh, she like Cottonmouth. Is, is our first one. Uh, it gives, gives our plus one health and plus one shield. That's not good. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then the next one is uh, tactical phase plus one health. Both pythons. That's not good either. Uh, so now she's got four health, but you know we can still maybe pull this off. And then uh, combat phase, reroll one success. Or if it's an air, and of course we're attacking in the Venom Air Dominator, uh, reroll two successes. So if we get two successes, we have to reroll those. So it doesn't look like it's going to be very likely uh, that we're going to pull off the win here, but let's see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and take all these dice. And remember, we got to get uh, 
her defense is a five. So you're going to get fives or sixes to succeed here. And you'll notice um, some of these stats, like they go to six, seven, and eight, and obviously um, these are six headed dice. But remember, like remember that card I show you, like with um, Nightshade, and like she adds plus three. Uh, to the rolled dice uh, value of all combat dice. So that's how you get higher scores than six. And that's why she's such a good card. That's why I wanted to buy that one. So let's go ahead and roll these dice, see what we get here. We gotta get four successes. I'm not I'm not feeling it. <laughs> let's see what happens here. So uh, we actually came close. Uh, we got we got three successes. Now technically let's just say like I rolled um, those four and I'd be like, yeah, I, I got the Vipress. But Remember, her ability is, or this, because of this uh, 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 Venom support, we gotta reroll two successes, and so we'd have to reroll like two fives or sixes to we get here. Oh, I almost got it, I got a six. Well, I mean, I cheated to get the four, but I cheated to get the one. Uh, but, but, so, but, okay, so if we fail, nothing, you know, just, it doesn't happen, nothing works, and we just be done with our turn. If we succeed, like, so, like, let's say I got that, I got the four successes, what's gonna happen then is that. I would go ahead and I would claim uh, the Vipress, and uh, and you know, and that would be like she'd be worth victory points at the end of the game, and so, and then I would get to take this rescue, and I'd look and I'd say, yes, we got one, we got one of the four things, the red control cube, and then the global effect uh, reduced the Venom leader's health uh, or health. Defense or support by minus one is worth three victory points. And global effects are awesome because obviously they, they are continuing a thing. And you go ahead and you put that you know in front of you and you'd have that ability. Now, in the meantime, what you're going to be doing is that um, at the end of your turn, as I said, you get to retire uh, one of your cards and put it in the retirement pile. But then you go ahead and you put another reward over there and you flip over another Venom Leader. In this case, we got Professor Mortis. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put him there. So then we discard the cards out of her hand, we draw the next five cards of ours, and then the next player gets to go. And we'll just keep going around in every turn, and just like that, every you know, you're going to take turns building up your deck, building up your powers, um, and then slowly trying to fight against uh, the evil that is Venom as they're trying to destroy or take over the world. And hopefully, uh, you will be able to uh, you know, satisfy the mission requirements for the win uh, before uh, Venom satisfies their requirements uh, to uh, win their mission and defeat you. So, I remember, uh, yeah, so there you go. That is exactly um, how you play uh, Venom Assault. Uh, I, it, it is a cooperative game. I mean, like, a lot of cooperative games have a lot of the same stuff going on. But um, I loved the theme of this. Obviously, they're going for a very, very specific cartoon. Um, it's very tongue-in-cheek, but it's also kind of serious. But, I mean, also, like, the missions and the, and the events and things like that, like, like, taking over the animals and stuff like that. I mean, that was straight from the cartoon, which I loved. Um, the only thing that's missing, obviously, is the red and blue lasers. And and then I would, uh, it'd be, it, would, it would be almost exactly a port over, but I guess even some things need to be protected as far as intellectual property, if you will. So, all right, so there you go. Uh, that has been an assault, and why don't you, uh, we'll go to my conclusion, and I'll tell you uh, even more uh, about why I had a lot of fun with this game. I will fully admit that as I was playing this, I, in the back of my head, I kept hearing, like, Venom! <laughs> Well, maybe not that, but you know what I'm talking about. So, um, you know, I, I I talked about the theme in, in both as I was showing you how to play and also uh, during the introduction. And um, like I said, I'm a child of the 80s, and uh, this game spoke to me. I mean, as soon as I saw the cover, I mean, I knew exactly what it was. I mean, the whole process of, like, all of these, uh, the, these heroes that um, uh, come from different backgrounds and different nations and countries or whatever and so you have this like group of, of this fighting force and each one has their special ability I mean you just know there's this guy's like the big heavy weapons guy and here's the leader and here's the the mystical man with the sword and you know just like so you, you it, it was so obvious what they're going for and and I appreciate that about the game a great deal now um, you could have a great theme and you could have great art and you can have um, like a fantastic a uh, base uh, with with those ingredients or whatever and what, you, what you're going for but if you don't have uh, the game uh, to back it up it, it's, it's going to fall flat and you're just going to say you know well I mean thanks for trying but it, it really wasn't good I mean so but 
thankfully, um, you know, this game has a great game going on about it. I mean, there are so many different options and so many different things that are going on with the game that um, it doesn't grow stale. I mean, yes, it, it is deck building, and I know a lot of times I've talked about deck building games as being kind of... Um, run of the mill or or like they've kind of lost their steam if you will and uh, that but deck building by itself is is a very good uh, uh mechanism it, it is very strong and, it, and like it, it inspires uh decisive play and also inspires um uh, people trying to like work different combos together and and being specialized and the thing about being specialized and having a specialized deck or whatever is, is you're purchasing new cards for that deck is that in a co-op game then you can actually kind of split up your um you know, your expertise and, and and what have you and like you can start building cards because not everybody you know can be you know like the person that's going to be taking care of um you know, uh, the bases that are in the water, if you will. And not everybody's going to be, you know, the, the the big recruitment specialist or anything like, you know, as far as the different roles and, and things like that. And so um, you can then specialize as long as obviously the cards come up that you need, but it adds to the flavor of the game. It makes like each of you, yes, you have this little cadre of, of soldiers that you're relying on, but it, it kind of like makes it so you're like the different branches of the group, if you will. And like you're the, because you're, you're leading that little, uh, group of commandos if you will and uh, I found that uh, to to add to the thematic uh, immersiveness of the game and actually draw me in now uh, you know obviously I think if you like I said if you are a child of that era and you watched that cartoon and enjoyed it you're going to you got a leg up a little bit as far as uh, anybody else as far as, as the theme and, and, and being drawn into uh, the, the story that's telling you but because the game is is strong enough uh, mechanically and is challenging mechanically as well um uh, you know i mean it's just look at that little description that little demo i had of that that situation where it's like you have this plan it's like well normally you know on eight dice could you roll two successes in that situation well yeah sure but then of course as luck would have it things change and things get altered and all of a sudden the plans that you had that were going to be uh, fairly simple uh, are, are, are now really difficult. And this meets my cooperative game challenge of like it better beat me and beat me soundly especially the first time I play but also I shouldn't win that often I should win one every three times one every four times because the game should be that difficult and um and I appreciate that about these games because I don't want I don't want to push over cooperative game I don't want to like you know I mean I might as well just go play a computer game and save my turn every single time and if I don't like it I just reboot um I want the game uh to kind of smack me around a little and 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 you know make me say well you know i tried and 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 I, I i failed but next time when i come back i'm gonna try even harder because i learned something and then when you finally do get that win after a few successive losses it, it's that much more enjoyable that you finally pulled off that victory so and this game is difficult now you can as i said you can make it easier on you if you want but i'm a big believer in ramp up that difficulty and show no mercy to me and and uh, um you know and, and i like i kind of like the idea <laughs> of the bad guys winning just a little bit in this world after seeing uh, that poor organization uh, just throw millions and millions and millions of dollars down the drain and exploded helicopters and tanks and, 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 and jet planes. And thankfully, they all, you know, of course, jumped out and used their parachutes to escape when, you, when they got shot down. So there was no loss of life, mind you. But, um, I mean, they were like, oh, and 2,000. They never won. So um, it's thankful. It's kind of cool that the bad guys can can win and they can win very handily unless you know what you're doing so so there you go um i i dig the game it's a lot of fun and i think that if you're a deck builder uh deck building mechanism person uh, you're gonna like this game if you're a fan of the cartoons of that era you're gonna like this game and um if you're a fan of difficult cooperative games i think you're gonna like this game a great deal so there you go. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, Venom Assault, uh, please ask away. I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I am the Undead Viking, and I'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.